What is going on guys and girls? My name is James Lothexi and welcome back today to Hello Neighbor! How are we doing everyone? Welcome back, welcome back. So today, this is going to be a slightly different video than usual. If you're someone that has been watching the Hello Neighbor videos up on my channel, you will know that very recently we actually finished the whole game trying to do pretty much every single puzzle that we could possibly find. I may have missed a few things along the way, but I think that I did a pretty good job of it. However, <laughs> when I finished the game, which was like the last Hello Neighbor video that was posted, I was so confused as to what was happening. I had no idea because we've just played all of this game, we've done all of these things, and then for it to end in that way, I was like, oh my goodness, what on earth just happened? So I was super quiet, I was trying to work out what we just saw, and I kind of decided, all right, I'll tell you what, let's wait a couple of days, let's think about it a little bit, and then make a follow-up video, which is this one, giving you guys my opinion about everything that's happened, about the storyline, and about some various bits and pieces. So uh, I guess this is kind of like Hello Neighbor Explained. Of course, though, these are just my own personal opinions about playing the game. So maybe you might agree with some of them, maybe you might disagree. If you do have other theories and cool stuff, then please do comment them in the comments below. That way, like everyone else who's watching this video can go and read and we can see what you guys think about it. So yeah, we're gonna kind of do this in like acts, but just before we do that, I think like the most important question about this game and it's what people have been wondering for ages is, why is the neighbor so just really, really strange? Like, a lot of people thought at the beginning he might be this really, really evil dude. But from having played the game and seeing all of these various clues and bits and pieces, I think that the neighbor has more been driven insane by his own losses. So, we'll cover those in a little bit more detail later on. But essentially, it is of my opinion that the neighbor obviously had a wife and kids and his wife and kids are now gone. So it's the loss of this that he can't quite get to grips with because he can't accept it, he's not letting go, and it's these thoughts that are driving him to do these things. So an interesting thing as well is the figure of the shadow. Now we'll talk about the shadow a little bit later in more detail, especially when we get into the finale, when it really does explain itself well. But to kind of like get things done nice and early, I don't think the shadow is just the neighbors. I think everyone has a shadow in this game. We as the player have a shadow and he has a shadow. And the shadow is not just one person. The shadow is a representation of fear itself. Um, and yeah, you'll see why that's kind of important a little bit later on. Anyway, starting from act one, this is the first time when we, the character, meet the neighbor. So we're probably just a kid who is around the neighborhood and we kick our beach ball in front of his house. Now, interestingly, as we are making our way to his house, if we look to the left and the right, we see tons and tons of wanted posters for a boy and a girl. So we learn later on in the game that the neighbor had a son and a daughter, and both of these kids are missing. Now, there's kind of two ways you can think about this. One, they might have gone, they might have died, or they might genuinely be missing. But the neighbor himself has put these posters up because he is trying desperately to get his kids back. I think the only reason why we walked up to the neighbor's house and saw him in the window messing about with his basement is purely because we were a kid and we were super curious. I know that we'd met the neighbor before that. This was the first kind of like interaction we had with him. And because we were a kid and we're super curious, we thought, why the heck not? Let's get into that house and let's see what's inside that basement. So as we play around with the house and stuff, we do have some kind of like references and stuff to his past self. Uh, especially there's in some of the locked rooms at the top, especially the kids' bedroom. Uh, there's lots of like kind of sort of uh, drawings on the walls done in crayons and stuff, which obviously kind of lets us know that there once were kids there. However, for me, the most important thing about this act is one of the nightmares. Now, this just happens every now and again when you get busted by the neighbor. But yeah, the car crash nightmare is super, super important. So you can see here, now I'm using the trainer in order to actually have a little look behind the scenes. And this is something that we did not see the first time we played it. So if we clip through the wall, we can actually see the neighbor gesturing to this invisible person to get in the car. He closes the door behind them. I think it's the wife. And then he drives off. Moments later, though, if we actually go down the corridor, boom, we see the wheel fly through the wall, well, fly through the glass. And then if we actually get out there, we can see that there's been a car accident and the neighbor is crying. Now, we actually picked up on this the first time around, but if you look as well, there's like a little stiletto shoe on the ground, which is his wife's shoe. 
There's lots of little callbacks in this game, and we'll see those shoes later on. Uh, but also, just a really cool little uh, clue, which I picked up on as I was making this video. You can see that there's a house there with M13 on it. M13 is like the dude who makes the trainer to make all of these like ghost mode and things possible. So the clue is very simple. They've put that there for a reason. And it's that if you know about the trainer, you know that that house is located in the graveyard. And the clue is simple. Go to the graveyard. You'll never know what you find. I'll show you what we find a little bit later on. So we kind of do the bits and pieces around the house and we finally get into the basement. It's a bit weird though, I don't think we were expecting to find this. We find one room with a bed on the floor. Now this is kind of slightly confusing for me because this is either one of two things. This is obviously an area that the neighbour has built to essentially trap a kid so he can maybe feel like a father again. Now the weird thing is there's kind of like food and drink on the floor. So this is either we aren't the first person to be trapped down here, which... I don't really agree with I think it's probably more the neighbor has spent so much time making this place that he's probably just used the bed to sleep and then as soon as he's woken up boom he's got back to creating this like underground basement sort of prison I guess anyway we make our way through here and we are trying to escape and just as we get through the exit door and we are running away from the neighbor we come across a door with the three colored locked padlocks basically so these are obviously like a reference to the third act and it's in my opinion that these three padlocks both uh, all represent fear. Now, obviously, there are three of these which we do in Act 3, and both they're all called, like, fear rooms. And this is when I first started to think that those fear rooms are nothing to do with the neighbor. They're actually due with our own personal fears. And the entire Act 3 is a journey to get over our fears to become a better person. We'll talk about that later on. And then we find ourselves in Act 2. So this one, of course, is our escape from the neighbor's basement. And as we wake up, we can find ourselves in one of his little underground prison rooms. And we notice by our clothes as well that they're kind of like torn and ripped. So we have been down here for some time. We are still, of course, kind of a kid. Um, so it's not going to be years and years and years. But I'm kind of guessing that we've probably been down here for a good few months. But finally... We can actually escape now in this chapter we do a lot of callbacks and references to the neighbor's mental state uh, and the first one is we see the cardboard cutout of a boy through the keyhole now i think this is the neighbor's son and interestingly we see exactly the same cutout in the finale which we'll see a little bit later on so as we get up and we get into the garden, we can see now that the house has changed. Uh, as you can see from the sides, the fences have got super, super tall. There is a massive lock on the front door and the neighbor has done everything he can to try and keep us locked inside his basement or if we escape, try and keep us inside his property. You can kind of tell at this stage that the neighbor is trying everything he possibly can to kind of keep that dream of having a child alive. But of course, it is our job now to escape. So although we can go around the house and there's a few more references to his kids, of course, we do have another child's bedroom and we have a dollhouse, which is an amazing puzzle in itself. I think the most important thing about Act 2 is the two nightmares that we come across. So the first one is the roller coaster nightmare. Now this one is a really weird one because I did notice when I was playing it and recording it for this video that if you actually look down, you're dressed in your adult clothes. I don't know really if this was just a mistake or if this is kind of like something to do with a metaphor or whatever, but I think the whole point of the roller coaster is that it's literally an emotional roller coaster. Um, and riding the coaster, it's kind of like a bit weird, but at the very, very end, when we get all the way to the top, we are greeted with a cardboard cutout of a little girl. So I think this cutout is the neighbor's daughter. And weirdly, uh, as soon as we start to tip over the top, a set of hands come out of the front of the roller coaster. So it's kind of like, I think it's a metaphor for although she is so close and she's in reach, he can't touch her. Because as we are falling with the roller coaster, the cardboard cutout is falling as well. So it's kind of like one of those things where, you know, he, she's just in reach, but he can't grab her. He can't get hold of her again. He won't ever be able to kind of like give her a cuddle ever again or whatever. It's quite sad, actually. That's probably one of the saddest ones. At first, I was like, what on earth is going on? But now it kind of makes a bit more sense. The second nightmare, once again, is super, super sad. And it kind of shows us the um, kind of reality 
of the situation with the neighbor. So I think this nightmare relates directly to the car crash one that we saw in Act 1, and this one is the aftermath of that car crash with the neighbor inside the hospital with his wife. So although we never actually physically see the wife in the bed, we have a look at the heart monitor there, and after a few seconds it goes to a flat line, which means that his wife has passed away. Then if we actually move around into the corridor, we can see him in the corridor crying, pacing, and not really knowing what to do with himself. I think this is probably one of the saddest moments in the game because he has just lost his wife and it kind of starts to explain why he's going to go a little bit mad. Eventually, though, we do finally escape. We can go either through the door or through the trampoline. And this, in my opinion, is the last time when we ever see the neighbor in reality. So Act 3 for me is kind of a bit of a strange theory, but bear with me on this one. Uh, it kind of begins in the apartment. This is now much in the future, and we get a letter which brings us back to the neighborhood where we were once captured. Now, what's in this letter, I'm not sure, but maybe we just inherited the old family house or something like that. And it is, in my opinion, that the neighbor's house is now gone and the neighbor himself is also gone. Uh, I don't know where. Maybe he has been locked up in jail for all of the weird, creepy, sort of kid-catching things that he did. Um, but yeah, this is where my theory gets a little bit strange. So, when we wander towards where the neighbor's house used to be, we see the shadow. Now, interestingly, ourselves and the neighbor see the shadow very differently. We see it as a man-sized form, which kind of is telling us that we are still afraid of the neighbor and all of the things that he did to us in the past, whereas the neighbor sees the shadow in the childlike form, which we'll see a little bit later on. So until that shadow is gone, we will still always be scared of the neighbor and the things that he did to us. We go to sleep and then we wake up and boom, there is this huge house outside our window. Now, in my opinion, this house doesn't actually exist. This house is existing only in our memories and in our dreams and our nightmares. And in order to ever be able to get over the things that happen to us and to be able to live happily in our family home, we need to do all of the things inside the house to conquer our fear, to conquer our demons, to conquer our shadow. And of course, the biggest clue to kind of confirm what we've been thinking all along is the secret room at the top of the house. We find lots of discarded items from the neighbor's past. Of course, we have the dollhouse, which has been broken. We have a young girl's doll. We have uh, his wife's handbag and shoes. And of course, the biggest clue, the family picture of all four of them together looking really happy. The house is way bigger this time, way more complicated, and also contains those three fear rooms, the supermarket, the, uh, the cupboard, and the school. So I think that the house is bigger because when we were a kid, we had a more vivid imagination, and this is how we remember the house to be. This crazy, huge maze of rooms and weirdness. And each one of those fear rooms that we have to conquer are nothing to do with the neighbor himself. They're actually fears that we have had and fears that we may have thought about when we were trapped in the neighbor's basement. So we're going to see something a little bit interesting about that later on. But essentially what we need to do now is we make our way around the house. We do all of our various things. And of course, finally, we get into the basement to conquer our fear. Now, just before we actually get into the finale, you'll notice that we go back into the very same basement where we were captured. This is where we also see the shadow. However, when we get past that and we run down the same tunnel to try and get out, the door that we find no longer has the three padlocks in. So in essence, we have conquered our supermarket fear, our cupboard fear, and our school fear, which allows us to go and then conquer the neighbor. We start in what looks like the neighbor's son's bedroom, and once again, we see the cutout of the boy, which we saw a couple of times previously. Now, this is where it starts to get kind of interesting for me, because there are two stages to conquer our fear of the neighbor. So, as you can see, he is absolutely huge. He is our biggest fear. But remember, currently, we are in our adult form. So, before we can conquer him fully, 
first we need to conquer him as an adult. And of course, the whole point of the first part of this finale is doing all of the various things, bringing him down to his knees and being able to access that little house on his back, which is actually quite a big house. Once we actually conquer the neighbor as an adult, we then go to this area where I think it kind of gives us a little glimpse inside the neighbor's mind and kind of gives us a few examples of why he is the way he is. So we find ourselves in this giant room with millions and millions of wanted posters. Now, of course, these are the very same posters that we saw at the beginning of Act 1, and he was sticking them all over his neighborhood. Uh, and there are a few other things in this room as well. So if we look over to the left, we see a grave area with, of course, a shadow looking over it. Now, each one of the shadows in this area, I believe, are the neighbor's shadow. Therefore, it's the neighbor's fears. So he fears over the loss of his wife. If we carry on a little bit more, we see another shadow down in a basement. And then I think the most obvious one is the third shadow where we see him... Uh, putting up the wanted posters and as you can also see there is a shadow once again looking over him the shadow is really important because at the very very end of the game we see it again and it explains itself really clearly we go through the exit door for the big finale and this is us conquering our own personal shadow to try and achieve happiness and to try and achieve uh, I guess, peace within the real world. So we find ourselves, and we're actually looking at ourselves as a very, very small child when this all began. And this kid is running around this big house and he is meeting the shadow, as in the fear, in each of the windows. Now, what we need to do in this is we need to stand in front of the kid as our adult self and take the hit from the shadow. Every single time we do this, we get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we are protecting ourselves as a child, and each time we take our hit, we're actually growing larger, until the final hit, where we grow bigger than fear itself, and in that moment, boom, our fears have gone, and we have defeated it. We then find ourselves in peace. Everything is gone. There is a beautiful white room. We are free from our fear. We are free from our shadow. We have conquered it. Except one person hasn't, which is the neighbor. So this is basically my entire theory about the whole game. This is the story of two different people, both of which who are living in fear. One of which, us, conquers our fear, probably because we are the good guy in the story. But the neighbor, because of all of the things that he has done, never conquered his fear. There is a really small house in here, and if we go and have a look in the windows, this is the most clear thing to me. We see the neighbor in one room. He looks scared, and he has boarded up his door, and he is blocking something. If we go around to the other side of the door, we see that once again the shadow appears, which is fear itself. But the shadow is small. The shadow is a child, because I think the neighbor's biggest fear was always losing his child but he cannot get past his shadow to get to his own exit and he will never ever truly be able to live free because he cannot conquer his demons and he cannot conquer his shadow. As we walk through our final exit door, we wake up in reality, in present day, and as we look out of the window, it is a much nicer place. As we have slept, we have conquered all of our biggest fears with the neighbor, with our nightmares. We have conquered the shadow and we now know that we can live there without ever living in fear of the things that happened to us in the past. There was never in reality a act three house. That was all in our mind, but we needed to get through those things within ourselves in order to now live happily and have a good future. So yeah, that's my theory on Hello Neighbor. It is a battle between two people, one of which caused things to the other person, but then both people have these fears. One person conquers it, one person doesn't. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you have any other theories, then please do let me know. I've kind of done like the general thing. I didn't want this video to be super, super long. Of course, there are loads and loads of references and callbacks in the game. Um, but yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. So if you did, then please remember to poke me in that like button. And if you are not yet subscribed, go for it because we do Hello Neighbor done fun. But until next time, thank you once again for watching. It's been such a pleasure. As always, thanks. Rantio!